Yesterday I was trying ZBrush for iPad for the first time and I didn't like it very much. I ended up making a whole video about the money trap that it creates and that's the main reason why I didn't like it. But making that video left me with a sour taste on my mouth. I don't like being negative. So in order to get me in a good vibe again, let's talk about 10 things that I like Nomad Sculpt more than ZBrush for. Number one reason, of course, price. I made a whole video about it, so not, let's not get into it. But just to summarize, 20 bucks one time purchase. ZBrush for iPad is uh, 10 bucks a month. Uh, but to make full use of it, you gotta pay the, for the desktop version too, right? Okay, so this character was actually sculpted in Nomad, and I tried to, and I tried to bring it over to ZBrush uh, just to to play with the brushes a little bit. So the UI, they're both pretty simple, but ZBrush's UI has too many hidden and like that's not just on the iPad. On the computer is the same, if not worse. But I got used to it. So. Let's just say like the, the UI in general, I don't like this floating thing. Um, it gives me like having to press on a circle and move, being able to move. I'd much rather have stacked the way that Nomad has. Uh, I can get over that, but that's one of the elements. ZBrush, let's say, uh, symmetry tools in ZBrush, right? Uh, if I am to, if, the, if I had proper topology on this and I would do like a smart reseam, I would have to go, let, let me see if I can find it, right? Like, uh, so I have to click on this thing and then find the deformation panel here. And then smart resim is over here. Okay, so it's not too much to ask, but let's say if I wanna do like a mirror and weld, then instead of being on deformation, I gotta go to geometry and modify topology and mirror and weld. So you gotta look for things and things that are uh, that should be together are not, right? Like all the symmetry stuff, uh, it's all over the place. And then if I actually wanna change symmetry stuff, I gotta go here to the global symmetry and change. So uh, you gotta go like symmetry alone, there is like four different places you have to go to adjust things. Uh, meanwhile, in Nomad Sculpt, you have this little symmetry icon here and all your symmetry tools are here. Mirror and Wilds is right here. And you got your uh, flip options here and you got the mirror topology. So uh, you have both side by side. Split and mirror is the same as mirror and Wilds and mirror keeping topology is the same as uh, smart resim. So every, and you change from global to local and everything within one menu uh, and then the icon is pretty self-explanatory and that's true throughout the software like everywhere everything here is very self-contained everything like let's say the outliner you go to the outliner here and you have all the options booleans and cloning and instancing everything is in here and in zbrush it's not right like it's all over the place so brushes uh, let's say if I get the, the clay tool, right? Like uh, I have set to 100% now. What if I need stronger? I just need to suck it up and keep building, right? Um, with the clay tool, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm used to that. Uh, for smoothing, that's especially when you have a, uh, get like pretty heavy topology. That's where where you're gonna miss having like this move stronger. Uh, in the case of the ZBrush for desktop, I use Smooth, uh, smooth Stronger when I'm working with uh, Dynamesh. Uh, here I don't have that option. Maybe if I pay for the full version, I might have. But for, for things like clay and everything, you kind of you kind of stuck with whatever 100% means. Uh, meanwhile, in Nomad, so let's say 100% here. Oh, I'm not even at 100%. So. 100%, let's say, it, uh, let's say it's not enough. Uh, if I do three finger and I keep going sideways, intensity keeps climbing, you see? I, I can get like to 600%, so it's breaking stuff. It's not ideal, but it allows me to do it. And that's with any brush. Let's say with smooth, right? Um, let's go on the face here. And, um, 
suppose I want to like just erase the whole ear, right? Like the, um, let me just make the brush smaller. The whole ear here, smooth this out. Uh, I, I can like, normally it kind of takes a while. If I go to 100%, I got over 100% already, right? Like if I go to 100%, a lot better. But let's say I just want to be quick. So I can just um, keep going 500%, let's see. And it's done. So uh, just the ability to go above 100 on intensity on every single brush. I wish ZBrush for Desktop had that. This is fucking awesome. Tap to select. This is one of my favorite features in Nomad. Uh, if I'm sculpting on the face, uh, let me get the move brush. And I'm already like, and I want to switch to the body here. That's a different object. I, I just tap with my finger on the body and I keep sculpting. So I don't need to go to the outliner fine stuff. Um, so ZBrush for iPad, if I click, if I tap there, nothing happens. I assume that if I hold out and tap there, yeah, that works. But it's an extra step, right? Like it's similar, same to the uh, actual ZBrush for desktop. Uh, but I really like this in, in Nomad. You just tap with your finger where you want to sculpt and you keep going. Which brings me to selecting things overall. So one tap to select what you want to sculpt on. Uh, and I really like not only this, like this pink flash that happens, like in ZBrush when you, when you switch, like I'm sculpting here, I switch to this one. Now I'm sculpting there, but how do I know if it worked, right? Like usually I'm gonna make some, some marks. So if I tap there and I, I didn't press properly, I'm gonna make some marks, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna try again and now, it, oh, still didn't happen. Now I got it. So um, you don't know when it worked. As in here, you just like press, uh, as it switches, it gives you a, a little visual indication that you switched to, to another thing there. And also, undos are not object dependent. So this is both good and bad. Um, I really like ZBrush's way, way of um, uh, keeping history and having like pretty much unlimited undos, but that comes with a cost, right? Like how many times, if, if we're jumping from one to uh, one thing to the other, uh, let's say if I'm on this one and I, I wanna undo the nose thing that I, uh, let's say I do this on this one and I do this change on this one. Uh, so I made changes on two different objects and the undo is not object dependent. So this is both good and bad. I tend to like it because I jump through objects quite often. So another thing, I'm pretty sure this one is something that ZBrush is gonna incorporate soon, but as of for now, ZBrush for iPad doesn't have it, and it's reference images. So Nomad, pretty clear icon for, for images, you just tap on that, reference images, mine is already loaded, if yours wasn't, you can just click here to select one, uh, and on the side here, it is my reference, and if I wanna move it around, I can just click here on transform and now I can position and scale and rotate the way I want it. You just uh, tap outside to, to get out and you can also set opacity. So if it's too distracting, especially if it's line work, you can lower the opacity there and keep it or even better overlay. So. So now you can overlay your character with the reference, right? Like if you are falling to a dot, the reference, so you, you can actually do that. Uh, so not only uh, ZBrush for iPad doesn't have any way of bringing reference that I know of right now, uh, the way that Nomad brings reference in, I think it's even better than, than ZBrush for desktop does. Lasso selecting multiple objects. Uh, and this is another thing that Nomad does better than ZBrush for desktop too, not just ZBrush for iPad. Um, first, I don't think you can even select multiple objects in ZBrush to begin with at the same time. Like uh, you can with the gizmo, but it's a whole thing, right? Like you gotta do a whole bunch in order to move stuff. Here you can do a lot more than that. Uh, so if I hold shift, 
it holds smooth and start it from outside the model, I can lasso select everything or just a couple things. And not only I can move things together and transform them, I can actually go to the outliner and they're all selected there. So let's do just the face elements. Uh, it's gonna get the eye too, but it doesn't matter. So I got the face stuff and here are all my sub tools for it. So my sub tools, I'm such a ZBrush guy that I keep saying that, all my objects here. And let's say I wanna combine those. I can just join them. And now they are a single, single object. So let me undo that. Oh, that's another thing. ZBrush, you can't undo merging different objects because of the way that the history is object dependent, sub two dependent in ZBrush. Uh, you can't go back in history after you merge something. So uh, another win here. Um, and the outliner itself, it's, and as we are here, the outliner itself, it's so much better than ZBrush. Because you not only you can select everything, including cameras and lights here, we have cameras and lights here, uh, but you can group stuff very easily. And you see this little check mark? If I select two of them, they don't need to be like, if I want to merge something on the top and something on the bottom, I just check those two and joined, and they're merged. In ZBrush, you gotta like move things around and merge it down, and it's a whole thing. Like here, it's a hundred times more intuitive. Uh, I like this so much more. And let's say if you're moving around and you wanna frame the object, right? Like in ZBrush, you press F for it. Uh, here, you can just double tap and you frame that object. Uh, let me move to the face, double tap. Double tap, you frame the face. If I move to the body, double tap, you frame the, uh, and it's double tap outside, right? Like you frame the body and home here goes to the front view. Um, you can lock the views here. And this is something that I find it really cool. Uh, I'm on pers am I on perspective? Yes. So I'm on perspective here, right? You, you can see that like the foot is not lining up even though I'm pretty much on a uh, side view. Um, if I, when I click on the right view, it's orthographic. If I rotate again, it's perspective. Usually when we, you're on a, on a flat view, like front, like it's down center front or top, you, you don't want a perspective distortions on those views. Um, so just being able to click on the right view there and locking it without perspective, not having to turn on and off perspective all the time. Another wing here. So let's go back to ZBrush. So ZBrush here, it's trying to mimic a keyboard with those hotkeys here, right? Like it's not very gestural, like. Uh, having a keyboard with ZBrush for iPad, it's almost like a must. Um, if I, like, I don't know, it's very awkward. Like if I have a flat on a table like I have now, uh, I don't feel, uh, it's not very ergonomic. Uh, if you're holding the iPad on your lap, it's a little bit better. Um, but same, same as the desktop version, right? Like if you, if you wanna use the negative version of a brush, you press out, hold out and you sculpt, you hold out and you sculpt. And that's cool, but sometimes you get kind of sick of holding out there and then you can go here and switch from Z edge to Z sub, but it's a whole bunch of buttons you gotta press, right? Uh, on Nomad, so let's get the clay here, just so it's the same example. And let's, uh, Increase that intensity so it's easier to see what we're doing. So if you're sculpting here, uh, if you want the negative here, you can do the same and just uh, hold the sub here. And that's pretty much like holding out in ZBrush. You can just uh, press the sub instead of holding and now it locks. Same with smooth, if you just press, it, it locks. Uh, if you hold, it's same as ZBrush holding a shift. And one thing that I really like is you can just use some, some of the pen features here, right? So I'm on the clay up here, right? If I double tap the pen, one, two, you see now it's, now it's negative and I double tap and it's positive again. So this is how I usually switch between sub and ads in, in Nomad. 
I just double tap the pen and the, I don't know, it has been really helpful, especially with the move brush, because then it's not negative. If you're on the move brush, it's just uh, um, normal. And the name changed there, right? Like, so now it's uh, normal based. And if I, if I double tap again, I gotta be close to the screen for that to work. Now it's, uh, now it's the standard way of using the move brush. Mac caps, like visualization, right? Uh, um, this is more similar to how Blender sculpting looks, I find, in terms of um, uh, matte cap selection. Um, let's go here to lighting. And so you have a huge selection here. I like using uh, a little bit of color sometimes. Uh, it feels very similar to how Blender deals with matte caps. I like ZBrush matte caps a little bit better. That being said, you don't need to use Mac apps here. You can go to a full lit scene. So if you go lit, um, you're gonna get uh, a lot of, um, not a lot, but a few HDRIs to base your, your lighting on. So that's the, the basic stuff, but then you can actually add lights. So add light, and it's a physical light that you can move, adjust intensity, instead of the weird lighting that you get in ZBrush if you try to do the same. I think it, like this is super huge, like this is really cool. And that leads me to rendering. Um, in ZBrush, you're kind of stuck with the BPR stuff. So ZBrush here, you have the, I don't even know how to get to those things because, okay, BPR. And you get what you get, right? Like maybe there is some settings you can adjust here, but it's just this fake lighting with matte caps. It's not really uh, nothing nothing to get excited about. Um, let me open another scene. Like this was just like a one-off scope that I did some time ago here. Again, this is not like a, an amazing render, but if you go here, like I have set up uh, post-processing, I have global illumination, there is like ambient occlusion that can be adjusted on the fly, depth of field, it's like, it's close to, to key shots, I would say, like in terms of uh, rendering. Uh, okay, key shots more powerful, but for just to have like built into the sculpting app, uh, and even like some cool, cool filters and things like that, right? Like with the, the post. Uh, so let me increase the quality here. And you got reflections, you got global illumination, ambient inclusion, depth, depth of field, bloom. So you can, let me increase this bloom effect here. So you can make things really pop there. <laughs> and again, like I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything here, just showing tone mapping. Like that, that's a, a post-processing thing that, you know, uh, usually you go to Photoshop to get to those. And, and here you can just have straight out of the like vignetting, grain, like so many options. I, I haven't even tried all of them. Uh, I usually bring it to Blender to, to render. I don't render in here. But just, let's say if you're traveling or if you're not home, you don't have access and you just want to do a quick post, you can actually waste a lot of time just uh, playing with settings here and getting the final image to look a little bit better. As in ZBrush, you're more locked, especially on the ZBrush for iPad. And just to close it up, the, another big win for Nomad, it's also on Android. Uh, I have it on my phone, so having it on my phone, I think it's more convenient for me to show sculpts to people if I happen to bump into somebody that I want to show something, than actually sculpting. But it's still pretty cool, right? And if you don't have an expensive iPad, there's a lot of cheaper options on the Android side that you can still use Nomad on.